Hello and welcome to a new video on Luke Salmon Books and Studios. Of course, my name is Luke and I am going to be designing a website from scratch. Well, maybe using jQuery, but mostly from scratch. And I will also be using a project that I have been developing in the background called Hacks Share, which is the new edition of OWL with a different paint, a different name so to speak so we are going to be developing a website from scratch using jquery hack share but mostly no other third party tools now you're probably wondering why i'm even building a website from scratch the main reason why is because i need a website up and running I am trying to demonstrate my skills to web developers out there, employers in particular, and this is one way to do it. Of course, my website itself will be one way to do it. And so this is what I'm going to be doing. I really do hope I do not get another <laughs> blue screen of death so I don't have to redo this recording. So hopefully everything will go well. So. How do I design websites? Well, you might notice I've got a dev folder and a live folder. So I like to actually separate the two. Um, normally I get, but in this case, I'm not going to. The main reason being is because um, the live folder will, well, so there's going to be two different versions. Basically, this is the development environment. This will not be submitted to the um, uploaded to the website, the final version, at least. When, when the final version is complete, I would copy and paste the dev folder into the live folder. And then it's the live folder that I then use to upload to the server. And then that way I can uh, upload images and other such things so that's the reason for this stru folder structure here um i'm not sure if that's the best way to do it maybe i'm open to suggestions maybe i'm not depends how good of a mood i'm in i suppose but anyway this is how i do things another thing i'm going to do is create two folders i'm going to call one hacks and the other www so the website itself is going to be inside of the www folder and the actual hacks source code will be in here so that basically means that all of the ftp information will reside within this folder this is the folder that i'm going to be using to upload to the server and I want hacks to be excluded from that. So that's the reason for the separation of the folders there. <clears throat> now I'm going to be using two tools to develop this website. The first is brackets. I'm going to be using brackets to design the website with. Its live previewing features are pretty good. Let's be fair here. And then I'm also going to be using Visual Studio Code for the actual development side of things that's actually using hacks to uh, put in a router as well as a variety of database objects connecting to a database etc so that's the main way of de developing things now what i'm going to do now is go into here i'm going to open this folder oh Well, we are in this folder but anyway so in this folder i'm going to put in an index.htm file i'm going to put in our styles and then i'm also going to put a scripts folder here so inside of styles i am going to put main.css as you can imagine and then inside of index.htm, first things first, just adjust my microphone a minute. First things first, I'm going to put a declaration at the top of the HTML file. It's called doctype. It's, kind of, it's a declaration tag, I believe it's called. 
and basically what that means is we like to we would like to define the version of HTML that we want to use. So in here, um, you can imagine in old versions of Internet Explorer, for example, you might have HTML version four or HTML version three, right? And you might also have some additional, um, you know, XML S or whatever it was. I can't remember it now. Um, which was kind of like your template file, I suppose you could say. I can't remember it exactly. Um, but that's basically the declaration to tell the web browser, this is the version of HTML we are using. Next, I'm going to create the actual HTML element itself. That is basically the block of our document. That is the HTML document itself. Next, I'm going to put a head followed by a body. So the body is the content of the HTML page. Anything that we design for our website happens to be inside the body. In our head is basically our metadata. So let's start with the title, as you can imagine. And I'm going to put here, Luke Selman Books and Studios. Fairly simple. Um, let, let's Let's be consistent with HTML um, standards. So this at symbol, um, at symbol, ampersand symbol, um, it looks red on my screen. It might look red to you, I'm not sure, but basically that indicates a syntax error. At least that's what brackets thinks it is. Um, let's correct that and do that. So technically this is the correct way to do it, but it doesn't matter. Um, I will in fact show you. So what I'll do is I will open the live previewing capabilities. Uh, oh. Yes, that's because of the BSOD. I remember that. So um, you might see at the bottom of the screen um, a separate sort of window. What I'll do is actually open up this and go over to the side screen and minimize that so that you can see Luke Salmon Books and Studios is here. Um, so yeah, let's go back to our main screen. Might be a good idea. I don't know, I actually have my, I have my camera connected, but it's not um, in the right place. But anyway, meta name. So I'm gonna actually start putting in the metadata itself. So the author, just to get the uh, boring stuff out of the way first, uh, Luke Salmon basically my name. Um, what we also want is a meta car set. We definitely need that, especially for uh, Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer is just weird. Um, we also want meta name, oh, description, content. And inside the description, I'm just going to put a personal blog and information about the works of Luke Salmon, something like that. And inside of keywords, I am going to put personal blog, my name, website development, design, something like that, I don't know. Um, uh, books, because I am writing a book, that's why. And I think one more thing, we're going to have a viewport. So in our viewport, I'm going to say uh, width is equal to device width initial scale uh, one. Now you're probably wondering what the hell does that mean? Basically, what this is doing is it's saying on mobile devices, I want to make sure that the width is matches the device width, um, and the and the initial scale is one when we match that device width. Um, what would, if you were designing a website by yourself, what would you do to find that information out yourself? Well, what you would do is you would go onto Opera or your favorite web browser at least, and you would say MDN viewport um, and MDN 
is the Mozilla Development Network. It's what I would, it's my choice in terms of what to you, where to get information from. Um, I personally wouldn't always use Stack Overflow. It's, it's okay for more isolated cases, let's say, if you need to solve something that you're not quite sure of. But this is the uh, main go-to um, documentation for HTML, in my opinion. So this is what I just used. So width is equal to device width, initial scale is equal to one, just like that. So that's a typical, like it's like it says here, a typical mobile optimized site contains something like the following. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to do is add a link to a font. Now I did actually find a good font. Um, earlier on before my oh interesting <laughs> lots of squares um i did find an interesting font that i'd like to use um when i was recording until my screen my computer decided to flip out um where is it which one is it i'll know by the name Where is it? There it is. So this is, was the one that I was using. Oh. So what I'm going to do is copy that and I'm going to put it in here. So I'm linking the CSS for that font. Next, I'm going to link my actual CSS file itself. Again, need style sheet here. And let's go ahead and get a script as well. Uh, for the time being, all I'm going to do is uh, do, 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 do. yeah. I'm just going to copy the link. Copy the link. This is this is not the oh, not what I was meant to do. Copy link address. Um, so. I'll explain this in a minute, hang on. So I'm just gonna put this in here and then we can leave it like that. So the main reason why this is probably not a good idea is because just in case um, that file um, disappears, then the jQuery code will no longer work. Um, so we would need to grab that. So eventually at some point, I will probably include a local copy. So now that we've got the basics down, what I'd now like to do is go over to our CSS file. Now, the first thing I like to do is select every single element and set its margin and padding to zero, because at least that way our styles and themes and whatever and layouts will all be exactly the same across all browsers. That's the reason why I do that. Next thing I'd like to do is select the HTML and the body. And I'm going to make both of them 100% and height 100%. Now you're probably wondering why. Well, mostly that's a figure of it's basically just habit. Um, but secondly, if you want to do things like transforms, like say, for example, grouping layouts, so that when you scroll up, you'll have a background image that scrolls slower than the foreground. In order to get something like that to work, you absolutely have to have this in place, otherwise it will not work correctly. Um, I haven't done group layouts before um, well I have but very limited uh, skill set in that area I will probably come back to it at some point in the future but I um, haven't done it in a while so uh, but anyway next thing I'd like to do is of course add the font family itself so let's go back to our fonts oh god damn it <laughs> I got rid of it where is it Uh, why did I do this for? I am silly. 
Right, give me the font family. I'm being lazy, so I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, font size. Uh, 20 pixels, I think, is what I liked. Uh, so we'll keep it like that for now. And so what I'd now like to start doing is, in fact, start designing the website. So first thing, I'm going to have a div ID content. That is quite simply just going to stay there for now. And the next thing I'm going to do is above it, have another div with an ID of header. And inside of here, I'm going to have a UI ID of nav. In fact, first of all, technically what I'm going to do is div class panel. You're probably wondering what I'm doing. So I'm going to have a navigation and I'm also going to have a header which I'm going to just put my name there. So and I'm going to put a class against that and then we're going to call it title. Uh, so inside of our main.css I'm going to say mate panel. So I'm going to mark that. I'm going to get the width. I'm going to set that to 70%. Margin is going to be auto. The title is going to be text align center. And the font weight is going to be 100. And the size, font size, is going to be 90 pixels. That's the one I selected. So that's what it looks like. Hopefully, you can see that at the bottom of the screen. And what I'm going to do is set a different, a slightly different background color. So it's going to be F4, F4, F4. Probably wondering why I set that. Well, that's because I set it originally in the original video with that color. And I also added a gradient to the title. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that information again. Uh, text, color gradient CSS. Thank you very much. I found it here. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to paste it in here. And I'm going to check. Now this is one of the reasons why I do not use brackets for actual web development. The main reason being is because you tend to have to fight with the indentation sometimes, and that's not very good with lambdas, um, and especially for my style of programming. Um, but anyway, I'm going to make this 555, and this is 111. Oops. Not sure if you can see that down there. Um, hmm. Font weight. Does that look thin to you? It doesn't look thin to me. Might just be me. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is inside of index.htm, inside of here, I'm going to start adding some uh, values. So this is going to be a hash based router. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here home. And I'm going to say here, uh, what did I put here? I can't remember now. Books. <laughs> I'm remembering, don't worry. So I'm just going to continue completing this. Uh, Portfolio. And an about page. Now, yes, technically speaking, SEO, search engine optimization. This is not the best way to do it, to use a hash based router, because then Google or any other search engine for that matter 
indexes our web pages, it will not detect the web pages against the hash because it's all JavaScript based. This is purely to demonstrate the hash based user capabilities inside of Hackshare. Eventually, I will expand it to include a server based router. So, eventually, this will in fact be a PHP file that takes um, or requires uh, another PHP file. So, we'll figure that out a bit later. But anyway, uh, so inside of in fact we're not going to go anywhere near there right now inside of here I'm going to set my nav now the first thing I'm going to do actually is say clear fix so I'm going to clear both so this will be uh, I'll explain it in a minute uh, so I'm going to put here clear fix for the pseudo. This is basically what's called a pseudo class um, or pseudo selector, I think. Uh, so this is going to be display block contents, which is going to be empty. It's going to have a height of zero, and that's also going to clear both. <coughs> So basically, what will happen is, when I say nav li, and then say display block and float left, so I don't know if you see that, but um, if I select the nav li in the corner of the screen, I hope you see it, um, the uh, list items are selecting. If I then select nav, if I go into here and I select, it's not doing anything. Main reason, what, main reason being is because we need to clear fix the element. Uh, that's this parent element here. So I'm going to add a class called clear fix here. And what I'm now going to do is, if I then select that, you we can now see it is flashing. Now the main reason why that is happening is because when we float left html does not know or css or whatever the engine is doing in the background it does not know the height of the navigation in fact because every single statically statically um positioned element is height auto it's automatically determining the height now what that means is if we float elements within that container to the left then the height is automatically going to be set to zero. Main reason being is because float left can contain uh, a height that is um, it the height of the contents of these elements could be anything for the engine knows. So it doesn't know what the actual height is. So it's going to default to zero. In order to fix that, what we do is we have this clear fix class which clears both. Now, I can do clear left, okay? And what that will do is it will clear any list item elements with a float left and calculate based on that. So as we can see, when we select this nav, it's flashing still. What happens if I then make this right? And if I try to select that, well, it's thinking that the height is zero again. And the main reason because we haven't floated any elements to the right. So in order to make sure that we cover our backs with regards to the height of this parent element, we put both here so that we calculate the height of all of the floating elements, both left and right within the parent container so that when it comes to calculating the height, it knows what the height is. So what I'm going to do is do something. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Now for LIA, I'm going to say display block. 
and then you're going to say text decoration none. I'm going to have a padding of 10, let's say, and 20 here. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see that below. I'm also going to make the color, say, six, eight, yeah, something like that. So um, there is also a way to make sure that these are displayed like a table so that we can align it correctly and center it properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the display table and then each li is going to be a display of table cell now then I've forgotten how you do this <laughs> Ah yes, so now what I can do is margin auto. So now, so what has happened? Basically I've converted the navigation into a table. Each list item is considered a table cell. So what I can now do is I can margin auto the nav and it will automatically align to the center of the screen as you see in the corner there. So let's just expand that so that you can see what's going on. Uh, go to side screen, minimize that. So this is what it looks like. This is currently no hover um, capability there right now, and we will figure that out in a short moment. So let's just go back to the main screen. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition. So this is where um, animations come in. Now there's two forms of animations. We can use the animation keyword, uh, which is here. Now this is limited in the sense that we can't animate things like um, colors or anything like that. So animation, at least in my experience, is mostly useful if you want to do animations on page load not necessarily um, with mouse or keyboard events. For those kinds of things, we want to use transition. So what I'm going to do is I want to transition the color and I'm going to say is in, and I'm going to put 0.2 S. So basically we're going to ease in going to ease in out in fact so we're going to ease in the color transition and we're also going to ease out when we stop hovering over it and that's going to last 0.27 seconds so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say and I a hover and I'm going to change the color to something a little darker triple three so let's go ahead and see that. So let's go back to our side screen. And if we hover over, they are animating the colors. That's quite nice, don't you think? I think it looks quite nice. It's quite simple. I like simple. So that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. I've been recording for almost half an hour. So this is going to be will constitute basically the introduction to my website. I've got a navigation. I have a gradient. And what we've also done is we've added some metadata. We've added the jQuery file and that is that. So thank you very much for watching. In the next video, I'm going to start adding some actual content and in that content, I'm going to just put together a very simple blogging system. I'm not gonna go overboard with it. It's just gonna be very, very simple. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.